Hey everyone, so the title to this video, probably a little bit dramatic. I'm not trying to say a bunch of authors are wrong, but I wanna show you what I found by reading Cisco Press books and then you know compare that to what actually happens on the routers. And what I mean is I have three books up here. I have the CCMP and CCIE Encore Cert Guide. I have the CCNP Route Cert Guide. And then I have TCP IP volume one. Let's look at each one's definition of feasible distance and then compare that to what actually, what the feasible distance actually is on a router. So the Encore cert guy says the metric value for the lowest metric path to reach a destination. Okay, best path, sure. Feasible distance here for the route guide is integer metric for the route from our perspective used by the local router to choose the best route for that prefix. Okay, and now TCP IP, the lowest calculated metric to each, des each destination will become the feasible distance of that destination. All right, none of those are wrong per se, but they're all missing a very important piece of information that may mess you up if you're doing labs. So I have, well, let me show you the topology first. There's this, this router, router one, which is connected three different ways to this switch, which is, it's the 10.23400 slash 24 network. We have three paths. So what we're gonna do is we're first gonna take a look at what the feasible distance actually is. What happens if my primary link goes down and then how it's used for loop, how it's used for loop prevention, because that is the ultimate goal of the feasibility condition. If you've never heard of the feasibility condition, don't worry about it. You will see it in action. So from our one's perspective, let's do a show IP EIGRP topology. I can see here that we have two links. I don't see the third one, but if I did a show topology all links, now I could see all three paths. So let me demonstrate why, first of all, we only saw two paths. And this is going to explain the feasibility condition and why the feasible distance is important. Then I'm gonna to demonstrate to you what the feasible distance actually is. So if we, if we do the topology for just this route, which is 23400 slash 24, we get a lot of information here, but really what we need is the feasible distance is 13 million, 100,000, blah, 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 13 million and some change, we'll say. Where did this feasible distance come from? Well, the first route is from R2 and it has that same exact number. So this distance for this route became the feasible distance which makes sense because from router three, it's 16 million, and then through router four, it's 22 million. So this is exactly what the books say. It's the lowest metric of all the possible routes to reach a destination. So far, so good. How is it used and why is R4 missing from our topology table? Well. If I get out my pen again, when you look at each route, we have two numbers. We have this number here, which you would be tempted to call a feasible distance, but that's incorrect. And then you have this number, which is the reported distance. So the reported distance is what R2 is telling me, you know, what the metric is to reach that destination from R2. So R2 is saying, yeah, I have that route and my metric to get to that route is, you know, 6 million, whatever. Then R1 locally calculates CD calculated distance. The calculated distance, I mean, there is a calculated distance for each and every route. So this has a calculated distance of 16 million. This has a calculated distance of 22 million. The best calculated distance becomes the feasible distance. But it's important to note 
that it's actually the best historical calculated distance, which I will demonstrate in a moment. The really important part to learn from this is that if the reported distance is higher than this value, whoops, then this feasible distance, that route will not be installed as a backup path because EIGRP cannot confirm that it's loop free. So this here, the reported distance from router three is 9 million, which is less than 13. Therefore, this route is installed as a backup path or what is known as a feasible successor. This route from four, its reported distance is 16 million, which is higher than my feasible distance. Therefore, we will not use this as a backup path because we cannot confirm it's loop free. So now that you have a little bit of that understanding, let me prove to you that the way feasible distance works is actually based on a historical value. So let me go to R1 or go to the link to R2 because that's currently the best we can agree do show IP as your B topology. We can agree that R2 has 13 million and that's the feasible distance. Let's shut this link down. Now let's show IP ERGRP topology and take a look. You can see the link from R2 is gone, but clearly some things have changed and some things have not. First of all, the feasible distance is still 13 million even though my best path has a feasible distance of 16 million. Now, why, why is it important that these numbers are different? Because if you read the Cisco press books, it, you know, and I came into this router not knowing you know, any history or not seeing the physical topology, I might come in here and see this value and be like, oh, the feasible distance is 16 million. But it's not, it's 13 million. And it matters to R4 because my reported distance is 16 million, which actually is even with this number, but it's still higher than here. So we're not going to be able to install this route. And we can, and we can prove that by, no, oh, whoops, I need to put that on there. Show IP RGB topology. We only have one route, which is this route from three, which again, the feasible distance is 13 million, but my calculated distance is 16 million. And I guess that's really what you know I'm trying to, to prove here is that in these books, you know, we'll take the Encore guide, for example. You have your successor route successor, feasibility distance, reported distance, feasibility condition, feas feasible successor, but nowhere in here does it talk about calculated distance. And it doesn't talk about that the feasible distance is actually a historical value. You know, I mean, I could look in here and, okay, it, it calls it path metric and then reported distance. Okay, I mean, that's fine, I guess. But nowhere in here does it mention that it's a historical value. And, and that's really what I want to, to show you guys and girls is that, it's a historical value and it doesn't change until the route goes to active. So if I lose this link to three, EIGRP is gonna to have to do a dual calculation. I don't know why this is popping up. Sorry about that. Um, it's gonna to have to do a dual calculation to find a path because it doesn't have a backup path. And in that case, let's wait for it to confirm it's down. Oh, sorry, I did no shut. I don't know why. Three zero shutdown. We're down. Now, if I do a show IP ERGRP topology, now I can see it's four. And if you look at the feasible distance, it's now 22 million because it had to recalculate. But again, it's the lowest historical value. So if I bring one of those links back up, like router two, this value is going to be lower 
the calculated distance is lower, therefore, we're back to that 13 million. And then look, router four was completely taken out of the table. So I hope this video was informative, um, if not a little bit you know, tongue in cheek with the title, but I just wanted to really impress the fact that feasible distance is important because when you're doing your feasibility calculation, calculation, you're doing it against the lowest historical cost, not against what the current lowest metric is. So I hope it was clear. I feel like I might've been rambling a little bit, but I hope it was clear. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them below um, in the comments. And thank you for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one.